government. All right, five minutes have passed. I believe it's just a typo, but uh, can I ask the administration to explain? Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the um, English version, we're applying for a new head, a new subhead is correct and there is a typo with the Chinese uh, version uh, we should rectify it uh, instead of um, uh, the Chinese equivalent of a new subhead it should be new head and uh, instead of new project or new item it, in Chinese it should be new subhead uh, this is not this will not pose any major impact on the paper. Chairman, do you accept this explanation by the administration? Can I invite the secretary to explain what is the usual arrangement? Secretary, the government has just amended uh, the Chinese version, and we have uh, looked at the uh, draft Chinese uh, version of the draft estimates uh, on. Uh, fund accounts and uh, the terminology is um, consistent with what the administration said just now. I don't quite get your meaning. So for the fund accounts, uh, what is meant by head and what is meant by subhead and what Ms. Zhe said just now was consistent uh, with the terminology used here and that is the administration can choose to withdraw the paper now or uh, to um, amend the version to uh, what is shown on the screen here. Chairman, allow me to um, complete my uh, representation first because this is a point of order. Of course, the administration has clarified that the AIIB is a new head. It is not a new subhead as um, uh, expressed in the Chinese version. Whether it be a council sitting or an FC, well, I'll use a council sitting as an example. When a member uh, pointed out that there is a discrepancy between the Chinese and English version in accordance with ROP 5074E, um, the um, item should be uh, negatived uh, because you don't know whether it is the English or the Chinese uh, version uh, that uh, should prevail. Well, because uh, if uh, there is something wrong with the uh, terminology, then it cannot be understood because uh, we have got CSAs ruled out of order by the president because of some uh, discrepancies in the Chinese version. I don't think you should accept a paper where there is a discrepancy between the English and Chinese versions. And say for myself, uh, no one has identified that discrepancy, including the administration and secretariat. Now, in future, does that mean that uh, with uh, wrong terminology or wrong uh, figure, uh, it can still be adopted with uh, 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 a correction here like this. Mr. Ray Chen, I think this is just a typo and uh, it is of uh, no significance and I don't think we uh, should suspend the meeting for this sake and please do not argue with me so we will have it uh, rectified and we'll continue with our meeting. Dr. Fernando Chung, Chairman. When we uh, submit uh, motions under 21 or 29, you would not allow a single uh, degree of discretion. No, I, I, I granted discretion once, all right? That's the only uh, time you uh, gave a discre discretion. But for typo on behalf of the administration, you said it doesn't matter. I think um, your bias is all too obvious. As Mr. Ray Chen said, this is a legally binding paper. If we um, do not clarify these, as um, at an earlier council meeting, um, the electoral president 
ruled that some certain motions were not inadmissible due to um, errors or typos. I don't think you are fair. We are spending six billion dollars in return to a voting right of zero point seven percent. I don't see um, how it can be justified. According to the paper, even the government pointed out that even if we don't become an AIB member, we can still follow China, um, who is the biggest member. And we can still take part in meetings, and it would not affect our business opportunities. I don't think um, there's any difference between member and non-member. And um, when it comes to voting, I don't see our 0.7 percent voting right can affect the big picture. I think we uh, we would only follow we would follow the big players anyway. For example, mainland China. So. Um, does mainland China require an extra 0.7 percent in voting right? I don't think so. We are spending six billion dollars of public money This would not um, affect the development of Hong Kong or such voting right. Apart from an independent voting right of 0.7 percent, it's negligible anyway. So um, can the undersecretary explain the urgency or significance? Chairman, of course 0.7 percent is not a big number. But the key is for Hong Kong to become a member of a multilateral development bank. This is an important message for our um, trade and international relations. And this is an um, important rep representation of one country, two systems. Can you be more specific? What would be um, the repercussions? In a multilateral body, as China becomes a member, Hong Kong can also become a member as a non-sovereign entity. This way, um, we can have our right of expression and voting right. Members asked about international relations. This is a crucial difference. I haven't heard anything specific. With less than 1% of voting right, how can Hong Kong benefit? Under Secretary, we have explained that in paragraph 3 of the paper. Our voting right allows us to take part in the AIB's financing and operation. And um, if we have such status and voting right, We can um, try to um, fight for the setting up of a, an international financing center in Hong Kong. So you think that less than one percent of voting right can help Hong Kong become a regional sub office? Do you think that less than one percent of voting right can buy the, can buy this? It would help, Mr. Lang Kuo Hong. Chairman, Mr. Ray Chen pointed out the mistake. Does it mean that the mistake has been corrected? Yes, it has been typed out. I'd like the um, secretary to clarify that. You, according to Rule 31 of the FC procedure, the chairman must be held um, accountable based on the um, practice of the meeting. Apparently, this was a technical error. Chairman, you have the right to clarify um, this point. 
but um, you have no right to correct this um, document based on the um, rules. I took reference to the um, Secretary's recommendation. There were cases before in which the government had the right to recall the paper or make a correction. In early in, um, cases in which there were mistakes in the um, error or, or data, the government decided to recall the paper immediately. Obviously, it was uh, a, a typo. It has been corrected. Who has the power to make such correction? I have made my judgment. You can deal with um, the order of the meeting, but for mistakes of the papers, you have no power. Well, I know better than you whether I have such power. Well, this is in black and white. How can you say that you are um, you know better than me? What I've made my decision. What have you um, d d decided on? I have accepted the government's correction. No one would endorse this paper. This is not a point of order, in my opinion, and I think we can continue. The chairman has made a decision. The secretariat has something to say. Um, there are um, two possible views. In the past, the government did make amendments immediately on meetings, and um, we have not encountered typos, as I recall. Um, those amendments were made based on members' comments, for example, establishment recommendations. For instance, the government suggested creating a supernumerary post for five years, and some members felt that the five-year term was not justified, and they would only accept shorter terms. And um, in those cases, the government orally made amendments instead of um, resubmitting uh, a new paper. So based on our practice, um, those would be accepted because those amendments were clear. Um, the key is not on the um, content of the amendment but the procedure. Whether um, the information is about the uh, an amount of figure or other data, you have to go through the, the amendment procedure. This is not about the content of the amendment, but we did not go through the amendment procedure itself. This paper is out of order. In other words, the chairman's judgment um, did not go through the um, procedure. I've made my judgment or decision. Mr. Dr. Cheng Chung Tai, I have made a judgment. Please stop speaking or else I will stop you. I want to say that we still have more than 60 um, items. I would not stop the meeting due to a typo or nor would I um, convene extra meetings. We, sh we should not um, waste um, time for Hong Kong people. I would not allow uh, adjournments. Dr. Chen Chung Tai, please stop speaking or I would ask you to leave. I've made a decision. Please do not waste time because we lack time. If you find my decision wrong, you can um, deal with it in, in another channel. Mr. Lan Kuo Hong, five minutes. Chairman, you are completely wrong. Well, if the government points out that I'm wrong, then I have to accept it because um, this is what we call fairness. But now you you made a mistake and you said it was a typo. But so I could also say I only made a typo before. I'm only looking after the, the money of the people. And um, we ask you to um, clarify where the um, salary deductions would go, and you refuse to answer. And um, as chairman, you 
um, well, what what is meant by a, a, a typo? Can you simply erase that? Then you can say that it's it's um, five hundred billion instead of fifty. Well, if you are going to play um, tricks, I'm going to um, stay with you. You, they should recall this paper. They, sh you should ask them to recall this paper and skip this item and proceed to the next. Recall this paper immediately. I'm invoking Rule Thirty Nine of the Rules of Procedure. This is a mistake by the government. The paper should be recalled. You have to respect Let's Go. You made a mistake. You should recall it, and you should come back next time. Uh, are you going to uh, adjourn proceedings for this um, uh, paper? All right, you have three minutes. Well, we are eggheads. We are being bullied, and you are uh, you are dickheads, and you are bullying eggheads. Well, I, I'm sure you know what what a dickhead and an, an egghead is. We are um, intellectuals, and um, they are annoying people. Dickhead might not be profane. Well, dick is not a profane word, and so um, nor is dicky. We are all eggheads, Mr. Lung Kuo Hong. You should not um, resort to foul language. Are you going to take back your words? If not, I think um, your conduct is some um, grossly disorderly. Just look up the dictionary. What dickhead means? I th I know what you mean. That's my first warning. Are you going to take back your words? Can our staff please ask Mr. Lung Kong to leave? Are you going to take back your words? Can our staff please escort him out? I will not leave. I cannot accept such foul language because you don't even know English. I will not leave. You can call the police. Dr. Smith Quad said I'm using foul language. She did not speak um, based on the um, order of the meeting. Can our security staff ask Mr. Lang Kong to leave? The meeting will now be suspended.